Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in again. Um, I hope I didn't frighten anybody off with last time's video with the mini beasts. You're all brave. I kind of thought you'd be brave and you'd come back, so thank you very much. Now before we start um, this week's video, what I would like to do is say a huge thank you to everybody who has donated to our animal care fund so far. It means more than you can even imagine and it's going to help us so much. If you haven't donated already, you still can, don't worry, there's plenty of time. Um, I'm going to give details at the end of the video so you can um, you can pass those on and share them with your friends as well. We'd really, really appreciate you um, having a little like, comment and share as well. It just brings awareness to what we're doing and hopefully more people can help us out. Also, a huge thank you to anybody who's bought a gift for our animals from our Amazon wish list as well. Um, They've been spoiled. That's all I can say. They are loving life at the moment. So thank you so, so much. Again, details for all of the bits and pieces, how you can help us and our animals at the end of the video. So thank you so much. Now today, we are gonna be talking about snakes. As I say, I hope I haven't scared too many people off by talking about mini beasts. And if you've got a phobia of a snake, really sorry. But I'm hoping this video is maybe gonna get you to the next step getting over that phobia of snakes, okay? Because we are gonna meet some incredible snakes today. Um, now, to tell you a little bit about snakes, they are reptiles. We've spoken about reptiles in one of our previous uh, videos, so you will know everything there is to know about reptiles now. Okay, so what kind of skin has a reptile got? You got it, dry, scaly skin. They are cold-blooded, so that means, I'm gonna use that posh word again, they cannot thermoregulate. That means keep themselves nice and warm like we can. All right, so they can't do that. So most reptiles, they need to bask in the sun. That basically means sunbathe. Okay, they pretend they're on holiday pretty much all the time. Reptiles, they've got it good. They've got it good. <laughs> so they'll, they'll lap up all of that sunshine, make their bodies nice and warm, and that gives them lots of energy to go and roam around, find their food. Now, I'm going to introduce you to my friend, Ozzy. Now, Ozzy, oh, he's a bit of a dude. He is a dude. This is Ozzy. He is called a California king snake. Now, I think maybe you could guess where he comes from. He comes from California in North America, as his name suggests. And he's called a king snake because in that area, he is thought to be the king of the snakes. And that is because he will eat other snakes. Yeah, you heard me right. He eats other snakes. Now, obviously, in that area, you are not going to get great big anaconda-style snakes. All right, you're going to get things like corn snakes, maybe rattlesnakes, and that's what he's going to be eating. He will also eat small mammals. He can eat birds. He can eat small amphibians like frogs and toads, uh, lizards. Um, but, yeah, mainly these guys will feed on mice, rats, and other snakes. Now, these guys are incredible because they have actually got a tolerance to venom. So if they are to be bitten by another venomous snake, most of the time they'll survive. That is amazing. These animals, they are just incredible at surviving. Oh, he's doing a little dance for you. Check that out. Now, you might be able to see he is sticking. He's not going to do it now, is he? But he was sticking his tongue out. Go on, Ozzy. Go on. Do it for us. Go on, don't make us wait for it, dude. Go on, you know you want to. <laughs> well, ah, there we go. <laughs> so these guys, they will stick their tongue out. And the reason that they're doing that, that all snakes do that, is it helps their sense of smell. So by tasting the air, it lets them smell better. So they are able to track their prey. They are able to hunt their dinner smell where it's been or going and then they can grab it. Now these guys are not venomous. They are known as constrictor snakes which means once they grab hold of their prey they wrap their body round and they eat it whole. Now there's a lot of theories around con uh, constrictor snakes um, that maybe they squeeze so hard that it crushes their prey. Actually it's been proven that these guys they just squeeze their prey so they're not able to breathe and yeah they die pretty quickly, which is, you know, I suppose if we're talking about that, it's a nicer way to go, and they do gobble them up quite quick. Now, snakes, do you think that they have got bones? Have they got a skeleton? Have a little think about this. They do. 
they do. They are vertebrate animals, like we've spoken about, okay? So they have definitely got a backbone and all of the bones to go with it. And do you know what? I'm gonna show you a picture right now. So let, let's have a little look at that. So did you see that snakes have got a skull, they've got a spine, and they have got a rib cage that goes pretty much all the way down to the tip of their tail, okay? And that rib cage, that helps to protect all of the internal organs, a bit like our body, a bit like our body, but they've got so many more um, parts of their spine and ribs. So a human has got around 33 vertebrae. That is the bit that makes up your spine. And they've got about 24 ribs. Whereas a snake, they've got between 200 and 400 vertebra with ribs to match. That just goes to show how different their skeleton is, but they still have one. Okay, yeah. Now these guys are pretty amazing. Do you like him? He's got this beautiful marking on him as well. Can you see this? Now, a lot of snakes, they might, and we're gonna meet a snake in a minute um, that does this, they'll use their uh, markings on their body as camouflage, so to blend it in where they live so they can hide away. But he doesn't wanna do that. This is a bold marking. So bold markings, bright colours, like we've spoken about with our skunk um, or our blue tongue lizard, they are to warn off other animals. Stay away because I will get you. That is basically what he's saying. Okay, other snakes in, in particular, he will just gobble them up. So don't mess with him. But I hope you actually quite like Ozzy. He's quite a handsome chap, isn't he? So next up, we are gonna meet our friend Bruno. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but um, our snakes are actually named after singers. So you met Ozzy Osbourne previously, you're now meeting Bruno Mars. <laughs> you've gotta have a theme when you've got this many animals. So we have got our friend Bruno, who is a royal python. Now these guys are also known as ball pythons and that is because when they get a little bit scared what they do is they roll up into a ball and hide this beautiful face that they have. Um, that hides them away from any predators and they feel a lot more secure that way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get him nice and close and I'm going to focus you in so you can see him beautifully because he has got a beautiful face. I absolutely love pythons, the shape of their head and their face. And did you notice that he has got these holes, these four holes, around his mouth? They are known as heat pits. And they allow a snake, or pythons in particular, to be able to track heat. What are you looking at up there? He seems something he likes to look at, but he's posing beautifully for us so we can see them. But these heat pits basically allow him to see heat. So he's, allowed, he's able to um, track his prey and um, feel where the temperatures are changing on the ground as to where fresh prey would be. Now his food would be things like mice, rats, small amphibians, he would be able to eat birds as well. He's showing these off beautifully for you. I'm very impressed Bruno, well done, very well trained. We've worked hard, we've worked hard in isolation. <laughs> now, royal pythons, they get their name because they used to be worn around the rulers' necks in Africa and as jewellery in general. The more that they wore, the higher up the royal chain that they were. So this is why these guys are called the royal python. And you'd find them living in the African woods and forests. Now we were talking about how Ozzy, the California king snake, had his bold Bold markings to be able to stand out, be bold and beautiful. But Bruno, he's a shy snake, so he has got still a beautiful pattern, but it looks more like shadows and leaves, and that is a, to allow him to hide on the forest floor away from any other predators, but also hide away from his food. So nothing will see him coming when he goes to grab it. He is another constrictor snake. So he's gonna grab hold of his prey, wrap his body around it, and uh, yeah, eat it whole again. But look at this marking. These are just simply amazing little creatures. Look at these, if I say little, he can stretch to five to six foot. But look at these markings on him. They're just beautiful. He's freshly shed as well, so can you see the shine to him? He's looking very beautiful, very gorgeous. Handsome, I should say, handsome for a boy. 
look at these guys oh beautiful tongue flick there and they've got a forked tongue so by having a forked tongue that is going to spread out the surface area of their tongue so they're able to smell more of the air it's going to help them much much better now royal pythons they are naturally nocturnal meaning that they would be asleep during the day so they're going to hide like, under burrows underground um, under logs under rocks and then they come out at night their eyesight is really really poor so they rely on their sense of smell and their sense of taste and also those heat pits that we saw. Now snakes, they don't have eyelids. If we get him nice, you're not going to let me now, are you? If we get him nice and close, snakes cannot blink. They have not got eyelids. They have got what is called an eye cap and that helps protect their eyeball uh, from any debris as they're um, slithering on the ground. OK, and as they shed, because they'll shed their skin a couple of times a year um, and that eye cap will come off with their shed. It's pretty amazing to see. Now, what these guys will do when they shed their skin is they will um, their skin kind of dries away from their body and then they'll find like a rock or a bit of bark and they will rub their face on it and it peels their skin down their body. It comes off a little bit like when you pull a sock off. Um, yeah. And then you are left with the skin of the snake. It's even got their markings on it. It does look beautiful. And then once it dries, it goes all crispy and then it becomes quite brittle and it can start to snap. But I think you will agree with me that Bruno is an incredible little snake. And I hope he's helping anybody with a little bit of a snake phobia get over that a little bit. Now we're going to um, see these snakes move a little bit more now. Now Bruno, as we said, would live in the woods and forests of Africa and they are known to be terrestrial snakes, which means that they will spend most of their time <laughs> on the ground. Now we were very clever and created, or I say we, my husband was very clever and created this climbing board, which uh, Bruno is really enjoying. <laughs> this is the first time he's been on it. And basically it was to stimulate him, give him a little bit of enrichment, which enrichment is basically activity um, to make his day not so boring. And what we would do with enrichment is it's to simulate what they would do in the wild. So these guys, although they would mostly spend their time on the ground, they are known to climb in low level trees. Now what he's doing, he's uh, checking out our backboard there. The giant, uh, the giant frog. Yeah, he likes that. <laughs> so it's basically to show you that these guys can climb and they use their amazing muscle to be able to squeeze onto even flat surfaces and they don't fall down. So obviously you can see how his body is twisted around those pegs on the board, but he's got amazing strength that he can hold on so he doesn't fall off the other end. You saw him stretching over the other end. So they can climb through the trees, through the branches, and their scales they act as um, like a little gripper they've got gripping scales on the bottom of them which allow them to climb up even walls um, you might have seen um, some videos of snakes um, like um, they slither up door frames on the top and up the side of buildings as well because they are able to amazingly grip with their body and he's showing you <laughs> great skills right now I'm going to have to go and retrieve him in a minute but I'm sure he's having a great time great time on that but as I say this is his first time uh, with his new toy and I think that class is a, a success so well done husband for building that I thought you might like to see where he'd gone to as he escapes behind our backboard <laughs> now as Bruno had a go I thought I would let Ozzy have a go as well and this is even better than I expected him to do. Look at that body movement. So what they're gonna be doing is constricting and relaxing their muscles. So they're, they're tightening them up and then they're relaxing to allow them to grip onto the, um, the board. He's using all of his body. This is amazing exercise for him because what's really, really important uh, with our animals being at the zoo is that we give them activities. We keep them healthy, as active as they would be in the wild. So a board like this, amazing. Well done, Trevor, for building it. Now he's, uh, 
Yeah, he's going around the back of the board too. <laughs> There's nothing exciting around the back of the board. <laughs> I'm wondering if he's going to come back. But that's just incredible. I needed to show you Ozzy just because it made me so happy to see I wanted to share. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about and meeting our snakes today. Um, I got a little bit excited. I can't apologise for that. I love watching our animals do new things and new activities and how they um, react to the things that we give them. So, uh, oh, I loved it. <laughs> now, to tell you a little bit about why we're doing these videos. Um, obviously, it is to bring a smile to your faces, teach you a little something and hopefully brighten your day during our isolation, which can get us a little bit down and a bit bored. But hopefully this will brighten your Tuesday and Thursdays. If you do have any topics or specific animals that you would like to see, please pop me a message. Please pop a comment um, on the video. I will do my best for you. I am trying to get through the list um, of requests so far and hopefully I'm I'm ticking them off as I go or ticking them off as I go but um, if you have enjoyed the videos um, please please can I ask for a little donation towards our animal care fund obviously at the moment we are not able to take in an income our animals still need looking after and we're doing a great job of that but a donation would really help us on our way it's going to get hard for us so any donation even if it's just pennies a few pounds a little bit of pocket money that would really really help us out um, if you would prefer to give an actual gift to our animals they are very much welcome um, the animals are getting you know they're spoiled they're really really spoiled but we've got an amazon wish list and what i will do i have popped them in the um, title of the video but i'll also pop it in the comments as well if you check out our um, facebook page and group um all of our social media pages you can find details of how to help because we are um, thinking of different and new ways um, for you to be able to help our animals during this hard time but thank you so much for tuning in and i look forward to seeing you on thursday see you soon